In the years surrounding World War I, many people living in Eastern Europe found it difficult to feed and clothe their families. War made supplies short, and conditions were often intolerable. National borders shifted back and forth, splitting families apart, increasing their suffering. These struggles led to frustration and anger. The impoverished peasants of Russia endured great hardships, while the government, far above them, crumbled with the ousting of the Tsar. To ease the mounting pressure, the government placed agents in the villages and, sur and towns of Russia. These agents intentionally stirred up trouble, diverting the peasants' anger away from the government and directing it toward the Jews. Peasants, infected with a mob fever that produced the pogroms, swept through Jewish settlements, breaking windows, looting, burning, beating, and murdering the unfortunates in their path. During this period in Russian history, many restrictions were borne on the shoulders of the Jewish people. They were denied the right to earn a living in, at most professions. Travel beyond their ghettos or settlements was forbidden without proper government paperwork, which was often either slow in coming or denied altogether. Jews could not own property, nor were they allowed to have in their possession more than two of any given object. Many Russians sought to drive Jews from the country permanently by making their lives wretched. In the Russian army, Jewish boys were assigned the least desirable tasks. Often, if they survived the perils of their assignments, if they survived the inadequate provisions supplied them, they were tortured or killed by their own comrades, the non-Jewish soldiers they served beside. This climate drove thousands and thousands of families from their homelands, not just Jews, but many others as well. In search of a better life, those families sought sanctuary in countries across the globe. We, today, are the beneficiaries of their legacy and courage, of courage and determination. So let's take a look at a couple of these words that I highlighted, and I'm going to continue doing that as I read Letters of Rivka with you. I will highlight words that I want to call your attention to words that might be important, or words that I think you may not be familiar with. The word impoverished, for example, is used here to describe the peasants of Russia, who, she says, are enduring great hardship. I might notice that the word P-O-V-E-R is inside of there, and I may have heard the word poverty, which also talks about or refers to people being poor. So the poor peasants of Russia endured great hardships. And why? While their government was crumbling with the ousting of the Tsar. The Tsar, in this case, you may not be familiar with, so I wanted to explain that to you, was the ruler of Russia in the early 1900s. Um, you could liken it similar to a king, the Tsar and the Tsarina, like a king and a queen, ruled over Russia um, like I said, up until the early 1900s, where the story takes place, when the story takes place. They also talk about the word pogrom here, and that too would be very new to us. So it refers in this sentence saying that the peasants infected with a mob fever that produced the pogroms. Now they're not talking about literally being infected with a fever, but she's being very, um, I guess, um, not literal in her language, um, but she's talking about people being so driven by um, anger and frustration and irritation and prejudice, it was almost like they were sick with something. And it led them to something called a pogrom, 
which she then does describe, in which people swept through the Jewish settlements, breaking people's windows, looting, which also means stealing, burning their houses down, beating them up, and even murdering them. Pretty scary, isn't it? And then finally, I highlighted the word ghetto. You can see that here in the third paragraph. And she does describe this. There isn't a little of an, a positive phrase or a, sim, uh, an, a synonym here right after it, a settlement. So it says travel beyond their ghetto or settlement is forbidden without proper papers. And so a ghetto I can infer is something or is a place where people um, are living. So this is the historical background in which we will begin our novel, Letters from Rivka, giving you a little bit of the information in which the book um, begins. And that will play out in our first chapter that we'll be, we will be reading together shortly.